Volkswagen's ID.7 showcases a different level of drive and battery technology to anything previously seen from the brand, and manages to do so with a polished presentation that for some will make this smart executive five-door a really credible alternative to similarly sized offerings from the premium makers. Predictably, this ID.7 delivers a very tranquil driving experience, uh, not really because of the subdued levels of wind and road noise, although they are very well suppressed. Uh, it's more because there's such a measured, predictable feel to everything that this Volkswagen does. A sports saloon it isn't, but what two-ton EV of this kind can ever really be that? Uh, there's lots of fresh drive technology here, principally with the new 210 kilowatt e-motor known in VW circles as the APP 550. This differs from previous VW Group EV motors with stronger magnets, a higher wire cross-section, more windings and improved cooling, all of which ought to improve efficiency and power rated at 286 PS. This ID.7 was launched in single motor rear driven form, uh, that's what we're trying here. A dual motor all wheel drive GTX performance version will follow and that'll pair the 286 PS rear motor with a 108 PS front motor for a combined output of around 395 PS. You'll want to know about the drive range on the mainstream models, uh, the familiar 77 kilowatt hour Pro battery offered from launch, which is what we have here. It will take the car up to 381 miles. A larger Pro S battery at 86 kilowatt hours, the largest VW Group battery to date, will arrive later to improve that to 434 miles. To get anywhere near those figures though, you'll need to almost permanently progress in the most frugal of the available drive modes, Eco. Uh, the others are Comfort and sport. The latter is the one uh, you'll need to release the powertrain's full 545 newton meters of torque and to replicate the claimed 6.5 second sprint time to 62 mph en route to the usual ID limited top speed of 112 miles an hour. Thanks to the standard fitment of the latest version of Volkswagen's DCC adaptive damping system, uh, these settings are able to influence ride quality as well as throttle response and steering feel. The brand doesn't though offer the driver any opportunity to alter brake regeneration, there's just the B setting on the drive selector if you want to more greatly energise the battery off throttle. Talking of the battery, you're going to need to know about charging here. The 77 kilowatt hour Pro battery that we have here can DC charge at an appropriately rapid public point at up to 175 kilowatts, which isn't particularly impressive, but does allow for a 10 to 80% top up in 28 minutes, which would add about 205 miles of range. The 82 kilowatt hour Pro S version can charge it up to 200 kilowatts, which is a bit more like it. At home, the AC charging time from an 11 kilowatt wall box is eight hours. I will need 12 hours, 15 minutes from a more typical 7.4 kilowatt wall box on a single phase supply. Plug this 77 kilowatt hour Pro model into a domestic socket though, and you'll need an incredible 39 hours and 30 minutes to charge it from empty to full. After its experience with the Phaeton, Volkswagen seems reluctant to create another super-sized saloon. So like its combusting counterpart, the Artian, this ID.7 adopts two five-door body shapes, this fastback five-door hatch, and an alternative Tourer Estate. Both are slippery, particularly this fastback with its sloping black roof, raked windscreen, floating flush pillars and short overhangs delivering a super sleek 0.23 CD drag coefficient. It's not particularly arresting looking as a design, one writer described its visual vibe as a collaboration between Hertz, Avis, Sixth and Europe car. And it's certainly true that if you took away the badge work you might struggle to guess the brand but it is neat, smart, and quite upmarket in its own way. 
The sporty flat windscreen frame and the striking coupe-like C-pillar are profile hallmarks here. And across the range, the roof and roof pillars always come finished in high gloss black, while the roof frame strips have an aluminium look. A defining style element of the RD7's wind-cheating silhouette, uh, that slippery CD factor is, as I said, 0.23, is the subtly upward arching character line located below the long uh, window shoulder. This ID7 is 4,961 mils long. That's a full 44 mils longer than the latest station wagon only Passat. And that makes this seven the largest ID model to date. At the same time, this fastback is also the lowest ID model we've yet seen with a height of only 1,536 mils. The dark Hudson black rims fitted here are 19 inches in size, 20 inches are optional, and they come fitted with air stop tires. And unusually, they they feature drum brakes at the rear. The front continues with the familiar ID series look, a stubby bonnet flowing into flush headlamps connected by an illuminating strip with a white designated Volkswagen badge in the center. These LED headlights feature a narrow LED strip for the daytime running lights, along with indicators integrated at the top of each housing. And uh, as standard, they include Matrix IQ light tech. As you expect from an EV, there's no attempt at a grill. Uh, the nose section is largely closed with visual character defined in particular by the three-dimensional design of the bonnet. This does actually open, but there's no space for anything beneath it apart from fluid reservoirs. Lower down, there's a prominent square panel for all the radar tech and tall, narrow corner air curtain cutouts. Horizontal lines emphasize the 1862 millimeter width of the body at the rear of this fastback. The most dominant line is a horizontal LED strip, which extends outwards into the wraparound LED tail light clusters. These can optionally display in 3D with animated brake lights and dynamic turn signals. Another distinctive feature involves the middle area of this LED strip, which is white and changes to red only when the ID7's lights are activated. As this car accelerates past lesser EVs, Volkswagen hopes that the powerful impression will be created by the bumper and the diffuser beneath it, both of which have a high gloss black paint finish. Of course, uh, what's more important here is what you can't see, the MEB electrified platform that all other ID models also use, although it features in a more bespoke form here. So let's take a look inside. Uh, the door handles, they're flush to the bodywork, although they don't spring out to meet you as you approach. Uh, now a disappointment of early ID models lay with the often complex and usually less than ergonomic design of their cabins. But Volkswagen says it's listened to those criticisms and has responded. And this is the result. A lot's clearly been learnt by Volkswagen in creating this cabin, and it's a big improvement on anything we've seen from an ID model before. The interior is dominated by this huge high-mounted 15-inch central screen with completely redeveloped MIB software. It's much easier to use than previous ID infotainment setups, and it works with a really intuitive IDA voice control system. I've found several search results. Uh, the brand still doesn't seem to like decently sized instrument screens, but the uh, tiny monitor provided instead doesn't really need to be uh, that much larger because it has been supplemented by a standard and a really detailed augmented reality head-up display, which Volkswagen uh, would prefer that you looked at instead. Um, the brand's useful ID light feature, that strips of light under the windscreen there, which uh, illuminate in different colours to signal drive or safety functions, well that's quite helpful. Uh, we aren't though especially keen on the trendy smart air vents, which rather annoyingly can only be angled via the central touchscreen here. And uh, Volkswagen still persists with these fiddly little sliders for volume and climate control. But the ergonomics, uh, they're very sound, the materials used feel high-end, and the ergoactive seats, well, they're brilliantly supportive, just as good as you'd find in any much pricier EV of this sort from BMW or Mercedes.
Right, time to look in the rear. And this is the part of the ID7 that might really sell it to you. A six footer will be a very comfortable behind a front seat occupant of the same size. And because there's a flat floor here, you can fit three adults without a problem. Uh, although the central occupant might uh, object a little to this slightly raised middle cushion. Let's finish as usual with a look at the boot accessed via this power operated tailgate. Uh, this hatch rises to reveal a broad hatchback opening and an enormous 532 litre boot. But if you need more room, the lack of a versatile 40-20-40 split folding backrest kind of thing you get with the rival BMW i4 is offset by this standard ski hatch that allows you to push long items between two rear seated passengers. If you need more room, then the rear backrest folds uh, via these two sidewall catches. If more space is regularly required, then you'll need the alternative Tura Estate body shape, of course, that has a 545 litre boot and it's extendable to 1714 litres with everything folded. The VW Group's all-electric MEB platform wasn't really developed for luxury cars, but on this evidence, it does a pretty good job in underpinning one. Basically, what's on offer here is just about everything you'll get from a Mercedes EQE or a BMW i5 in the pricier class above for an awful lot less. This 7 is a fitting ID flagship, and it's a sign to rivals that the VW Group's EV technology is really getting into its stride.